Hey YouTubers, you know, very few people realize the extent in which the Japanese have had contact with Africans and African Americans throughout history. The Japanese coming in contact with people from the African diaspora is typically met with undisguised curiosity. Did you know there are also Africans that obtained the status of samurai? Alexander Francis Chamberlain writes, and we can cross the whole of Asia and find the Negro again. For when in far off Japan, the ancestors of the modern Japanese were making their way northward against the Ainu, the aborigines of that country. The leader of their armies was Sakanoe Tamunamaro, a famous general and a Negro. Did you know that men of the African diaspora are depicted in Japanese and Chinese drawings and writings? Here's a hand scroll that was drawn between 1275 and 1293, which depicts one of the battles between the Mongols and the Japanese. Yasuke the African Samurai is a topic previously discussed on the Black Tokyo website. It's often written that Japan is not a place where one would usually associate immigrants from Africa or the Caribbean. Yet, in the late 16th century, Japan's most powerful warlord, Oda Nobunaga, had a black page who was not only a cultural curiosity, but also served as his bodyguard. He was granted the prestigious rank of samurai. The Japanese called him Yasuke. The reason for the name is unknown, as it does not have a clear meaning and is most likely a Japanization of his actual name. Yasuke is a well-known figure in Japan. The Tales of Yasuke is a masterpiece about an African young man and the Honoji Revolt. It is one of the works that has contributed to the development of the historical genre of children's stories in Japan. Upon seeing Yasuke, Nobunaga allegedly ordered him stripped to the waist and scrubbed believing that Yasuke's skin was painted. Japanese sources describe Yasuke as looking approximately 24 or 25, black like an ox, healthy and good looking, and he possessed the strength of 10 men. Nobunaga was further intrigued by the fact that Yasuke could speak some Japanese. It's estimated that the number of Africans in Japan during the 16th century numbered in the several hundreds. Those from the African diaspora during the 16th century were also soldiers, sailors, and interpreters. Some of the Africans served daimyo as gunners and entertainers. Despite the policy of national isolation, Africans mingled freely among Japanese visitors. Prior to the ban placed on Japanese slavery in the late 16th century, some privileged African slaves in Japan even kept Japanese slaves and mistresses. Many Americans, Commodore Perry is known as the American that opened up Japan to the West. But did you know, a former indentured servant actually set foot on Japan soil eight years prior to Perry's arrival. His name was Virus Conser. At that time, Edo, currently Tokyo, was a forbidden port where sailors were unable to venture in 1848. Mr. Kanzer was the first black American ever to enter Japan, according to an obituary published in the Southampton Press in 1897. One source noted that Kanzer was often mistaken as the expedition's leader because of his distinct color. Virus is famous in Japanese history. In the 1970s, Japanese officials even traveled to Southampton to trace his history and dedicate a memorial in his name. Well, here's something that Commodore Perry isn't often credited with. Commodore Perry introduced blackface to Japan. At the time Perry was engaged in opening Japan to civilization, slavery was still widespread in the United States, and minstrel shows were an enormously popular form of entertainment. Commodore Perry and his men first stepped foot on Japanese soil in 1853. Perry sought to impress the Japanese with authentic black men, so on either side of him, as the narrative tells us, Perry was accompanied by a tall, well-formed Negro. 
in Japan, as well as elsewhere on the voyage to and from Japan, Perry's favorite entertainment was an Ethiopian concert featuring white men playing the roles of colored genmen of the North and plantation niggas of the South. Commodore Perry and the other white sailors presented the black Americans to the Japanese as objects of humor. Perry's Ethiopian minstrels, as they were called, performed throughout Japan, Macau, and Hong Kong. While the Japanese were entertained by these images, these caricatures will leave a legacy in Japan for the next century. Unfortunately, many of these minstrel songs found their way into Japanese classrooms. Professor Kazuko Miyashita writes, since the late 19th century, Stephen Foster's songs have been among the best known American music in Japan for its simple, familiar tunes, which Japanese people associate with pastoral scenery or nostalgia for their native place or their childhood. Many Japanese students learn a number of Foster songs in their music classes from elementary to high school. In fact, many Japanese regard his music as part of their own cultural heritage. Her first encounter with Foster's songs occurred in middle school in the 1960s. She remembers singing such songs as Oh Susanna, Old Folks at Home, Old Black Joe, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, and My Old Kentucky Home. Many of you are well aware of Japan's love of baseball. The Philadelphia Royal Giants of the Negro League visited Japan in 1927. That's four years earlier than the all-white, all-star American Major League Baseball team. Baseball Hall of Famer and Negro League legend Biz Mackey and others played in Japan, Korea, and Hawaii on tour. They compiled a 35-2-1 record. Even in modern times, Japan is a whole other world for Westerners. But for the black players on the 1927 tour, it was just so in a completely different way. The tour was put together by Japanese American baseball pioneer Kenichi Zinimura, and it featured the Los Angeles based Philadelphia Royal Giants, as well as Zinimura's own Fresno Athletic Club team. The team toured Japan in the second of three such circuits. Looking at the treatment of Mackey and his teammates, however, Japan was way ahead of its time. Still living in the world of the Negro Leagues and a segregated America, the Royal Giants were treated like, well, royalty. Or sometimes, by royalty. The Emperor of Japan presented a cup to Negro Leaguer and Royal Giant Rap Dixon. That was quite a step up from life in a country where blacks were treated as second-class citizens. This is the moment uh, for those who... The notion of camaraderie through baseball and early bond of the sport's modern multiculturalism is what Sayama's book, Gentle Black Giants, says helped plant the seeds of pro baseball in Japan. Unlike the tours in the 1930s with big name major leaguers, the Negro League players did mock their opponents with hot dog plays, for example. According to Sayama, who published the book in Japanese and is still the only book written about the Goodwill Tour of 27, this respect was important to the Japanese players as was the willingness of players such as Mackey and Frank Duncan to try to teach their gracious hosts about baseball. Hey, thank you for watching and please be sure to leave your questions or comments below. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe and you can also follow Black Tokyo on Facebook, Instagram, and at the website www.blacktokyo.com.